Hey, what's up, guys? This is Sean here. So let's take a look at number 1671, minimum number of removals to make mountain array. So this is the last problem of this week's uh, bi-weekly contest. I think this is a pretty cool problem. You know, basically, you know, you know, you guys know like the uh, how this array will call it the mountain array, right? Basically, we need to have like a strictly increasing and then then strictly decreasing. Right, with a with a peak somewhere, but so for this problem, it asks you, it asks you, what's the minimum number of elements to remove so that you can make this this nums a mountain array? So for example, the first one, right? We have one, three, and one. It's already a mountain. It's already a mountain array. So which means we don't need to return remove anything. That's why we have zero. And for example, two here, right? We have we have we have two one one five six two three one. So one of the solutions is to remove this one, this one, and then the uh, and then this one, so that we have one five six and three one. Basically, that's gonna be our answer, right? So that's why we we read. Uh, we removed three numbers and yes but how can we find the minimum number right to remove mm. if you think about this right I mean we have to think it in a in the in the different way basically you know so the way it works is like the uh, we're assuming right basically we're picking each of the we're basically we're trying each of the uh, the numbers as the mountain, and then we will see how many basically how many uh, how many numbers on its left which is increasing, and how many numbers on the right which is de decreasing. And if you think it that way, I mean basically we are having like this x x x. Right, and then let's say this is the current the peak we're assuming, right? So at this at this point, we want to know how many numbers on on his left which is smaller than than p, right? It's not smaller than p, which is like a, like a increasing until p, and how many numbers on the right side, which is uh, decreasing until p, right? I'm sorry, it's also increasing until p. So now the problem is, uh, becomes what? So LIS, right? Basically, the longest increasing subsequence on each side. So once we figure that out, you know, all we need to do is just that we just have to pre-calculate it. The longest increasing subsequence from at each of the location for both, uh, for both from the left side and from the right side. And then after we have after pre-computing that the longest subsequence for both sides, we can try each of the peak, and then we can just use that that value, and then we just get the maximum <coughs> out of it, right? Among all of them, and then the answer will be uh, the total number, the total n minus the max of those two of the sum of those two, right? So I mean, in terms of the uh, the implement uh, implementations, I I'm gonna just use like a helper functions called LS to help me pre-calculate that, you know. And so the uh, the main logic is like this: we have a n that, and here, you know, it will return a dp, right? So the dp will just hold at each of the location what's the the longest, what's what's the LS, okay? And then here we have a length of the, the nums here, right? And then we have a DP and left. How about how about this? And then we have IIS nums, right? And then we have DP right. IIS what? Since we're since we're getting the uh, the increasing, so from the right side I need to reverse this. I need to reverse this uh, array here, right? And then I have the answer equals to zero. 
actually this is a max right max equals to zero and then here in the end we have a four in range what in range the uh In range from in range n, right? And we try each of the uh, so we just need to try from we don't have to try n. All we need to try is from n to a uh, one to n one to n minus two, right? Because I say for example here, you know. The possible peak is only from here to here, right? So we 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 don't need we don't need to worry about the first one, and the last one. That's why we just need to try this uh, within this range. And and then we also need to to verify this one. If the DP left i is greater than than one, right? So we, it means that you know. If it is if it's equal to one, then it means that it's there's no decreasing sequence on the left side. Same thing for the for the right side, right? So, but for the DP for the right side here, you know, since you know since I'm reversing this one, basically, you know, uh, I have to I have to do it from the uh, from 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 the end, basically, uh, n minus i minus one, right? So that's that's how I. Uh, do it from the right side, or you can reverse it here so that you can uh, use the uh, the, in, the same index for the for both the left and right. But I didn't reverse it here. That's why I have to do it in this way. And then I have answer equals to max of right. So the answer dot dp basically this these two things right plus that. And then I have to do a Minus one, right? So why I need to do a minus one? Because for example, this one, you know, we have a one, because it's pretty straightforward. Because we are counting the the peak twice in this case, right? That's why we have to uh, remove one addition, one extra peak from the total length here. And then in the end, I simply return the n minus. Actually, so this is not the answer. It's max that, right? That's the uh, the main logic, and now all it's left is just to, to implement this this LS, right? So I mean, a normal way to implement this L, uh, this LS is by doing like what a DP, right? So by doing like a nested for loop, which is the DP equals to one, and then n, and then we have a for loop if i in range of one to n, right? For j in range of of i, and then if the array dot j right is smaller than the array dot i right, if this uh, if this inner loop is the j is smaller than it, then we know okay we can that's a valid uh, entry point right. Basically, it's possible that we can get to the current state dpi from that dpj from the dpj because this the i is greater than j. So we can simply update the dpi in the range of max dpi and dot dpj plus one, right? So, and after this nice for loop, we'll have we'll have this dp that can t can give us all the uh, the I mean the longest the rs for each of the location, right? So yeah, I think that's it. Let let me try to run the code. Answer. Okay, sorry. Here. Accept it. Okay, so it's accepted, right? And so, how about time complexity for this, right? I mean, obviously, we have a O of n square here. That's the uh, that's the regular solutions for LS, which is O n square, and here, just O n, right? That's why the total time complexity for for the first solution is O n square, and space space complexity, of course, is O of n, right? 
space. Cool. So, I mean, I think some of you might have no, might know a better solution for for calculating LS, which is the uh, the binary search. In that case, the uh, the time complexity for this one will become to n log n. Right. So for that one, basically, we're using like a like a DP. We're we're still using a DP to store the uh, the actually the, the actually the sequence and the final answer. The uh, the answer for that will be the length of the DP in the end. But since for but for this problem, we are not only looking for the uh, the final answer for the entire array, but instead we're 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 trying to find we need the uh, the RS for each of the uh, the index so that we have to do a little bit of the mod the change here you know and so to do that you know I'm gonna here you know so the DP is still a, D, a DP here but instead the DP will be our final returns here but I'm going to use like sequence right to help us to keep track of each of the numbers here so basically now for number equals to array here and then we have index, right? The index will be the bisect. We do a binary search by uh, bisect left. We search this number inside the sequence here, right? And then if the index is smaller than the length of the sequence, right? Then we simply we simply update index, right? We update the numbers, and then else else what else we we append. Right, because else I mean, it means that you know the current in that the current number is greater than all the previous numbers. Then we can we know okay we need we need to increase the LS by uh, by append right by append this number to the uh, to the sequence, and then here here I just do a DP dot append right the the current length of the sequence basically, and this is gonna be our the the LS for the current for the current index. You know, previously, if we don't need to re the result for each of the numbers here, we do actually, we all, all we need is this, this, this one sequence, right? And in the end, we simply return the length of the sequence and that will be our, the, the answer, the LIS for this array here. Right, so for this part, I mean, maybe I'll try to explain a little bit here. So for those who are still don't, quite understand this I mean this part. So the way it works is like this. Let's say we have a two, one, three, four, mm, six, three, eight. So let's say if we have this sequence. So the way it works is like this. So the first time, let's only take a look at sequence here, right? We have the in the sequence we have two here, right? So the sequence we we have two, and so now one comes in, right? So when when one comes in here, so the index will be what? Will index will be zero because it's trying to insert to the left side, and we see okay zero is smaller than than one, which means that we're gonna update this two, up this two, with I mean with one. That's why we have one here, but keep in mind, see. Notice that the length is still one, which means that at at this index the LS is one, but here is also one, right? It's obvious, right? Because this one is smaller than this one, and now we have three here. So three, when we do a binary binary search with three here, we'll have one, which means that we need we'll do a append. That's why we have three here, and that's why for three the the LS is two. And same thing for four, right? So we're gonna do a four, and then we do what? We do what? We do six. Six here. And now we have three here. So three. So three, we will have like. Um, uh, how about let's let's do five here? I think five is better. So let's say if we have five here, you know, five is what? Five is a. Uh, it will be inserted right right here right that that's why the uh, uh, that's why this one will be updated to I mean with five but still as you guys can see so for this one the LS is still four the length of that and then in the end we have eight which is five right 
So that's how we use binary search to keep track of this iOS. Okay, so yeah, and I think this, yeah, this is finished. Let's try to run the code here. Okay, accept it and then submit. Yeah, and as you guys can see, this one is much faster because now the time complexity for this one here has become n log n, right? So the total time complexity is n log n. And all right, cool guys. I think that's pretty much it is. Actually, this one is pretty, it's a very tricky problem. You know, the, uh, I was trying to solve this one by, by using a greedy, you know, but it turns out there's no greedy solution for this one. And, uh, and then I try, I try to use DP, but you know, the way the DP works is that, you know, I was trying, um, basically I was thinking about, can I use a simple DPI here to, uh, to track off the, uh, basically track the, uh, with current I, what's going to be the, the maximum sorry the minimum numbers i want to re remove to make f to make it zero to i minus one uh mountain basically i was trying to use the definition of the problem but it turns out that's not feasible either because we have like an increasing and then we have a decreasing there's no way this d this one single dp can define that those two uh status and we there's no way we can track that so I think that's why, you know, in the end, so we have to uh, basically utilize this LIS approach. And then with this pre-calculated LIS, we just uh, try each of the locations, each of the, the each, each of the peak. And then it's more like, a, it's similar like a sliding window, you know, but it, I think it's different. But with each of the peak, we can, we can certainly, we can easily get the, uh, our final answer. Right. Yeah. So actually, you know, the more I think about it, you know, the uh, I think this this approach comes from a brutal force. Right. Basically, the brutal force is like we try each of the element from from the from one to n, mi n minus two as a peak, right, and then and then we'll we given like a peak, we'll try to see uh, like the, the basically how many numbers, how many numbers of element on the left side can be uh, de under decreasing sequence and how many numbers on the right side is also can be also a decreasing sequence. And, and then we're trying what the next step will be, how can we uh, improve the time complexity? Basically, it's just a pre-calculation by using our LIS, right? Cool. I think that's it for this problem. And thank you so much for you guys to watch this video and stay tuned. See you guys soon. Bye-bye.